Hey guys, so just another update for you on the cabinet. So uh, yeah, this week I have decided to have a stab at the uh, marquee light. So I've taken the marquee off, I've put it down there for safekeeping under the two bits of wood. Um, it's obviously glass um, with the printed lot film stuck on the back. So yeah, I wanted to keep it out of the way so I don't trip over it. So at the weekend, um, I there's a little, what are these uh, fucking starter? That's the word I'm looking for. This is the starter that was in it. And it basically sits just in that little white box there where those wires go. Um, so I bought another one and it was a, a massive 75 pence. And it has the startup. Uh, of 4 to 65 watts, so I thought right that'll be enough, that'll be fine. So I stuck it in and yeah the light came on and the light worked for about 10 minutes and then it started flickering on and off um, every couple of seconds and it didn't interfere with the screen, the game. Um, so yeah I took the uh, I took the starter out and then uh, I just like pissed around and I tapped the bulb and the bulb came on without the starter in and it was just glowing bright white. So I thought that can't be right, surely. And I looked it up, and um, it, apparently, if you run it without a starter in, um, apparently the bulb could explode. I, mean, I don't know how true it is, but this is what I read up on Google. So I quickly turned the machine off, pulled the um, connectors out each end, and just to save piston around, I've ordered a new bulb off eBay and a new starter. So I've got the correct bulb, so it's a 15 watt T8 connected. Um, filament light so I've got a new bulb coming and a new starter coming which is a better better than this one it's basically the same as this so hopefully that will be up and running so I'll be just clean all the uh, cobwebs and crap out of here dead spiders in here somewhere yeah look. so we'll dust pan all that out and hoover that out as best we can put the marquee on and might have a go at touching this up I'm not too sure yet I just want to get it working and put that in that's what's bothering me the most um, Okay, what else have I done? Okay, so the other night I was getting pissed off and not hit my legs. As you can see, like, all the tools are out on the floor. So I've taken off the um, bar that was going across the coin door. And it went on to here. So there's the remainder of that. So no more knocking my kneecaps on there. Because when I'm sat on this stool, it's like perfect height for your knees to hit on the uh, metal brackets. So yeah, did that. Um, I've also taken the locks out, so these are the locks that are on the um, in here, the coin door. So coin door and money box door locks are taken out um, because yeah, they're no good to no one. So I've got to, I've kept them to one side just so I know what size I need to get. And this was off the back door on the back of the machine, so it's got a slightly different um, like latch on there. So I'm going to go and get some more locks, so that should uh, sort that. Put a bit of uh, GT85 oil, highly recommend. Stuck a bit of that on these hinges and uh, yeah, work a dream now. No more squeaking. So uh, that, oh, once I've straightened out this, I'm hoping it's all going to go together lovely and I'll be able to lock it up again. Um, it's still pretty filthy, I haven't actually given it a wipe over yet, that's kind of my next mission. Uh, as you can see, it's, this has kind of turned a bit of a dumping ground. You can see evidence of uh, coke rings and coffee <laughs> on the side. So I've just kind of used this as my little storage bench at the minute, with all my shit on it. Um, so yeah, I haven't done anything else other than really just taking off the strap. Locks out. Um, yeah, and I, basically I bought a multimeter today. It's in the uh, Argos bag over there. Um, but yeah, I'm not too familiar on... Um, how to use them properly. So I'm just going to do a bit more research and before I start probing things in the back of the machine and electrocuting myself. So yeah, just going to try and find out whether this issues with the screen um, are um, power supply related, like not enough power, not enough voltage, um, or if the capacitors are knackered. So I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see the screen very well. Now it might kick on the sound in a minute, be really loud. Now apart from the scrolling black bar, is it going to focus? Come on. Not very well, no. 
I just want to see if you can see the dots. It's probably best to wait until the actual game comes on. Um, but this, you can't see it now. But when the game comes on, there's scrolling like black dots on the screen. <laughs> Do its thing. I'll set the start so as and when it wants in the cycle. So I also noticed under the gun. I'm not sure if you will be able to see this. Operation Wolf. Oh, I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to see it. Apart from like, an inch of dust. But basically, there's like a, um, on the bottom here. The gun, there's like a kit, like a lot. Um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Almost like a latch that prevents the gun from being twisted um, too far. See, but actually, underneath the gun, there's one under there, but it's like not attached to anything, it's just kind of loose. You can't really see it in this light. But when we get that looked at, get the gun sorted out. I really want the recoil to work, so I have to get that worked on at some point. Right, let's see if I can show you this screen. Now, it looks worse on the phone than it actually is in real life. But can you see what I mean? If you can just make out the fuzzy white dots that are going across the screen. Now, it's more noticeable at the bottom. Can you see that? Like the dancing white dots. That is kind of what it's like when you're playing it, but it's not as noticeable as it is now. When I'm zoomed in and it's, you know, on the phone it looks quite bad. But when you're actually playing it, it's not so bad. But And it's like kind of like blue ghosting at the bottom of the screen. Bottom right hand corner, that's kind of there. But yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to pick up on camera. And the, at the minute the image isn't really jumpy, I'll say it pops in and out. Um, let me see if I can uh, coin it up and see if it'll happen. See, I'm trying to work out if it does it when it's under load, um, like when you're obviously putting a bit more on the screen to play the game. So let's see, let's see if it will do it when the game plays. Now, if, if excuse the uh, sound, it's be quite loud. Now, can you see the fuzzing on the gun? That's what I mean. It's like that over the screen, all over. But you can see that it, at the minute it's only on that back of the gun. It's not actually anywhere else on the screen other than inside the gun. But when the game is on, it's all over the screen. Um, so I need to work out what that is. And you can see that the image is actually off of the screen at the bottom. So I'm hoping that will be a simple adjustment. So let's just start the game. I'm not actually really going to play it. I'm just going to see if it will start popping in and out. So we'll start it up. So it's going to be quite loud. Operation initiated. the way it always seems to behave when you don't want it to the, the shaking now is just my hand no it's not going to 
don't know, is it? It's always the way. But yeah, you, I mean, the fuzzy dots, you can clearly see the fuzzy dots. Um, and the image definitely needs to be moved up slightly from the bottom of the screen. I mean, that's just a simple adjustment, I think. But yeah, just wonder if anyone actually knows for sure what could cause those that fuzzy on the screen. And why the screen would wallow and pink in and out a little bit. Whether it's voltage related or if it's definitely a capacitor issue. Um, yeah, it'd be inter interesting to hear your uh, your thoughts on that. Oh, also, on the um, on the actual identification um, of the monitor and the chassis, it's um, it's an MTC nine hundred. That is the model I found. The um, there's a, there's a label on the back of well, the side of the uh, chassis itself, and I used a mirror to actually see what it was so that is it's definitely an mtc it's a, is it hantarex 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 mtc 900 yeah right, pink then oh, that's the way i'm not looking mtc 900 so that's the chassis um i did write down the code next to it um because i think there's there's several different versions i think it's a de04 or something like that there you go see it jumping So I'm not sure if again if that, if that's a capacitor issue or a voltage or something. I'm not sure. I mean I'm not electronically minded at all. See it doing it again. It, this is what it does. It just does it every now and then. Jumps like that. And then what happens is the, the image will kind of like zoom in and out a little bit. It will kind of like pink in and out. So I'm not sure obviously what's causing that. But if anyone obviously has an idea, I'll be uh, very grateful to know. Obviously, I'm just trying to eliminate having the whole bloody screen out. Um, if I don't need to, it's just a power supply issue. That'd be a lot easier, I'd have thought, to sort out. But again, feel free to fill me in with your uh, your thoughts and experiences. So yeah, just to have a quick overview. Locks off. Um, locking bar off. Glass off the top of the marquee. And uh, yeah, waiting for a new bulb and starter to fit, and I shall purchase a new lock. So yeah, that's uh, the second update. Um, I haven't done anything else down here. I haven't put the cover back on yet. I still need to um, hoover all that out as carefully as I can and put the uh, door back on. So that is where we are at the minute, guys. Again, thanks for watching, and I shall update you again soon with another video. Take it easy.